Alright guys, so we're going over derivatives right now, and as I said before, a derivative is a simply a small value uh, divided by another small value, and this gives you some answer. But, this can also be expressed as a function, and let's just call this function f prime. This is This is the general notation. This prime symbol means a derivative. And a derivative is an operation. Doing the derivative, you do an, uh, an operation on a function. But the derivative of a function is a uh, very important, uh, very important part of it. Uh, it's, it's the slope at each individual point. Now you might be saying, I thought slope was only something that you could have on a, on a line like this. Well, that's that's true because to take slope, you have to you have to take two points. Let's say right here, and you take this y, and then you subtract that y, and then you take this x, and you subtract that x. And slope is equal to the change in y over the change in x. But what if we did the same thing over here? Let's say we took two points that were pretty close together, like let's say right here and right here, right? And then we kind of drew a line like this. There. All right, then, and then here, let's uh, continue it this way. All right, this is from right here to right here, kind of an average slope, how how much it kind of average. Well, I don't want to say a average, but this is like, if you were to go from right here to right here, your average speed would be going this fast. You could go a little faster, you could go a little slower, but you would be going at least this much. Uh, but... Uh, this this obviously isn't the slope right here. I mean, this it looks almost flat. So so what if we took a point closer to here? Let's say we take a point right here. That would be that'd be about right here. That would be uh, about right here. It looks looks like this could be a better approximation. What if we took a point even closer to there, like right here? If we did that. Well, geez, it looks like we're getting really, really close to. What? What if we took a point, infinitesimally small? Well, then we would have a slope like this, uh, between two points, and that slope right there. This is equal to the tangent line right here. So, a slope in calculus for a curve is what we're going to define as the slope of the tan line and the tan I don't mean the tangent function I mean the tangent of a curve so right here this would be the slope of this point right here and we could we could find whatever that is so, well, how would we find slope at this point? Uh, and, well, let's, it would be a, well, let's use function notation. It would be y's, which is, we're just using f's right here. This would be f of x plus a, a very small amount, a small change in x. We'll say x plus dx. And then you subtract uh, your first value, and then we'll do what we had down here, dx minus x. Now, I'll, actually, this doesn't seem right to me, x plus dx, there we go. This is the same as doing change in y over change in x. and 
as you see right here, the X's right here actually cancel out. Oops. The X's here cancel out. I'm just going to change colors randomly. So we're just left with a DX on the bottom. And this is essentially how you take the derivative. Uh, I'm going to go over that in a later, this definition of the derivative. But right now I'm going to show you how to take the derivative of most functions that you're going to come across. Now, now for any function, let's for any power function that is, or actually let's start with an easy one. Let's say you start out with a function that looks like here. This is a pretty bad set of axes. Let's say you have a function that's just y equals five. All right, so this is at five. Well, what's the slope for any point in this? Um, what's the change? Well, it doesn't change at all. So let's say that the derivative of x for any constant function is zero. And f of x in this case is constant. And it doesn't matter where this constant is. This the change is always going to be zero. Well, let's let's draw another set of axes. This time, actually, good. And let's let's imagine we got a line right here. Well, the the equation for this line is uh, f is equal to um, x plus b, right? Uh, so the, the, the change in this line everywhere is this value right here. So we could say f prime of x is equal to m. So of any linear function the slope right here, the coefficient in front of x is going to be that, is going to be the, whatever the coefficient is. So uh, I'll just tell you these next ones and see if you can get a pattern. Let's, let's say you got x to the third, this, the derivative, uh, I'm not going to use that, f prime here, let's 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 make a table instead. That'll be easier to follow. We'll go f of x. We'll make a table, and we'll give you f prime of x. Okay, so you x squared. The derivative will be two x. X to the third. Got three x squared. Let's go x to the seventh just randomly. Seven x to the sixth. Now uh, I'm going to go over how I get this number in a later video. It's actually really interesting. But just trust me that these are the slopes for all these functions. These are like if you want to find the slope at say 7 for this function. What's the slope at 7 of the function x squared at x equals 7? Well this says that the x, you just plug in right here the slope is 14. So there's also one more rule that I'd like you to to learn I guess for this and this rule is the coefficient rule. Let's say you have um, here Let's say we're doing f of x equals 4x squared plus 2x. Doing the derivative is super easy uh, for this equation. f prime 
of x. Now we know what the derivative of x squared is, but we don't know what the derivative of this function is. And I'm going to tell you right now, you can break up the derivative by pieces if, if you're adding. You can also kind of break up the derivative if you're multiplying by a coefficient. Because you can take out that coefficient. This will be equal to 4 times the derivative. And this is also a symbol for doing the derivative of x squared. plus 2 times the derivative of x. And we know what the derivative of x squared is. It's just 2x. So this would be 8x. And we know what the derivative of x is. Like I said, f prime right here, it's just the coefficient right here. And the coefficient right here is 1. So you can just have the 2 right there. So you can I hopefully see how you can get that done. I might be going a little bit ahead of myself. I don't know. I just, in my head, this is how it makes sense. Next episode, I'll be teaching you kind of the, the math behind, well, how do you get from right here to right here? Uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye.